Catholics in communication. Um, we've discovered something wonderful, which is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that changed our lives. And something that changes your life, if it's good for me, it's probably also good for a lot of other people. So we have like a, almost an, an well, talk, talk about St. Paul. It's like, even if I didn't want to, I just have to. I'm, I'm just pushed to evangelize, to talk about this. I cannot stop myself from talking. And I think the more you discover, the more you, you, you uh, deepen your faith, the more you get that, that almost natural desire to communicate it. However, we've been doing a lousy job lately. For a lot of um, my friends and former classmates, when they hear Catholics talk about their faith, when they hear a bishop, when they hear a priest in church, uh, we sound like that. I don't know if you've seen the movie, it's Mars Attacks, and these aliens, they, they land, and the only thing, that their language is like, <laughs> <laughs> and there's this huge miscommunication during most of the movie. It's very funny. And, but for a lot of my friends, that is what Catholics sound like. They're like, we're, we're from another planet. We have a totally different language. We, we even talk Latin from time to time. It's just, just they have no idea what we're talking about. Um, and and this, is, this is getting worse because our, our culture is changing so fast and there are so many other players on the market. When I was in Canada the other day, um, these Canadians, they're totally crazy about skating. And, um, and I had two pictures on this presentation, one on the left of this um, a figure skater. This, <laughs> was, you know, doing his pirouettes and with a big spotlight on it. And then on the right side was a, was a photo of, of a hockey game, you know, where they are like, <laughs> And I was like, you know, as a church, we've been used to the, to the, to the left model. We're used to, to the fact that we, we do our little figure skating, and everybody watches us. And everybody's like, oh, this is wonderful. Isn't that great? Wonderful. And suddenly, we wake up in 2008, and this figure skater finds himself in the middle of this arena with all these other ice hockeyers surrounding him and hitting him. And that's my punk. <laughs> and, and so we, we have to kind of relearn how to, how to, how to communicate in this, in this changed world. And things are going so fast now, and there's such a revolution going on. And one of the biggest things that we have to somehow seem to solve is our, is our, our communications problem, the gap between what people know, the language that they speak, and our religious language. And we should become, you know, we should be, instead of being Martians, we should try to learn at least the language of the people that surround us. How do you do that? That's been uh, one of my driving questions for the last three years that we've been working on this podcast. How can you build a bridge between the world of the church and the rest of the world? And I, and I notice that once you bring people with you inside the Vatican and you, and you explain stuff, like, oh, right, now I get it. I've got another question. And so, you know, Bit by bit, you bring people to places where they've never been, and they're you know curious what's going on in the Vatican. And at the same time, you transmit a little bit of your language and your world to your audience. So there's like this communion that starts to that starts to build. Now, <clears throat> of course, at one point I I had my four parishes in Amersfoort, so I couldn't stay in the Vatican forever. So I was wondering how can I how how should we continue? This is such an, a huge opportunity for the church. What can we do to, um, to, to develop this? How can, we, how can we build these bridges? Well, one of the things um, that I learned from podcasting is it's very, uh, it's very personal. It's all about passion. And the podcasts that I love to listen to are the podcasts by people that are passionate about something. And it can be about knitting. It can be about building steam trains, it can be about uh, church history, uh, it can be about anything. But the podcasts that work are the podcasts where you feel that this, this woman or this man is totally passionate about what he's talking, or he or she is talking about. And um, of course, as, a, as, a, as Catholics, as Christians, we are passionate about our faith, but hopefully also about other stuff. I mean, there are also things that we share 
with the rest of the world that interest us, that, that we're passionate about. For instance, books and movies and music. And we, we have that in common. That's our, that's our common language. So, um, so how, how, how can we do this? What, what is going to be our approach? How can we build that bridge? Well, of course, as Christians, we have to go to the source. Um, the best communicator is God himself. He's, he's got the best network in the world. It's 100% uh, uptime. It's free. It's more than broadband. It's very immediate. Um, it's, it, it can reach all the corners of the world. Um, and it's, uh, it's just an amazing network. So we can learn a lot about you know, how, how, what can God teach us about communication. And <clears throat> one of the token stories that I always use to explain um, how, we how we try to build that bridge is the story of the, of the Magi, the three wise men. Um, it's not that, you know, Joseph and Mary, they have their child, and then they publish an article in their local newspaper, like, come see this, this is the savior of the world. <laughs> it doesn't really work. Um, so, how does God let, us, let the world know about what's going on there in, in Bethlehem? Well, he, instead of staying there in, in Israel, he puts a star on the horizon or on the heavens of this foreign culture. These three guys, or uh, we, we're not even sure if they were three, but um, so it's a different culture, there's a star. And God is not pushing these guys, like, come on, get up your behind and, 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 and start moving because you're a bunch of pagans and you've got to convert because you're the savior. No, it's just a star. And it's twinkling and it's beckoning. And these, and these magi are fascinated. And they're curious and they're like, we want to find out more. Let's, let's start a journey. Let's, let's move. Let's go follow that star and see where it will bring us. So nobody's pushing them. Nobody's pulling them. It's their own curiosity that drives them. And the more they travel, the more they start to feel that this is really something special. And then during their, their journey, they encounter other people that are also looking for, the, for this, that same star and that are also following that, that star. Travel companions that know the area. They even go to Herod and ask him, you know, where can we find this child? They didn't have uh, the... Uh, navigation systems at the time, so he was like, well, Bethlehem probably would be a good place to start looking. And <clears throat> so they have other people that help them on their journey and that guide them. And then the final thing that happens is that they, they arrive, they discover this child, and community starts to occur. There is an exchange. There is interactivity. They bring their gifts but they receive an even bigger gift. And their lives are changing. One of the things that Pope Benedict said when, uh, during the World Youth Days in Cologne, he had a beautiful meditation about the three magi, and he said, you know what always strikes me in the story is they took another road home. They don't travel the same path anymore. Their life has changed. And they bring this gift that they received to the people in their country. And, and that's, that's how God communicates. 